So you want to speed up cycles? I will show you some techniques you probably don't know. Let's get it done. In the render settings, make sure it's cycles and GPU compute. Make sure your samples are at least 100. I usually do between 100 to 500 samples. Depending on the scene, you're going to have to do a test to figure this out. Make sure you click adaptive samples. This will give you 20 to 30% faster render times. Also, go to performance and you're going to go to tiles and make sure your tiles are 256 by 256 or 512 by 512. It depends on your graphics card. In my case, 256 by 256 is faster. This is important because adaptive sampling won't really do a lot of good if you have a low tile size. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into your light pass, make the total number of bounces 2. You're not going to really notice a whole lot of difference between 2 and 12, so make sure you do 2. You can turn off caustics, reflective caustics, and refractive caustics. My scene doesn't have either of them. If they do, you can leave them on. But this will speed you up a little bit. Then you're going to go to simplify. Make sure you turn on simplify right here. And you're going to do, for viewport, you're going to do AO bounces 2. And for render, AO bounces 2. You don't even need to do the viewport one, but I always like to see what I'm going to render. And by turning on simplify and changing the AO bounces, what it does is it replaces the global illumination with ambient occlusion after the specified number of bounces, in our case, 2. This can reduce noise, especially interior scenes with little visual difference. This is good to do because it's going to make your scene that much faster. Next, a huge thing that a lot of people don't know is if you're using an HDRI, which in this scene I am using an HDRI, you're going to go into your scene settings. Sorry, world settings. I'm all turned around. All right, so you're in the world settings, and you're going to go to settings, and you're going to change some sampling from auto to manual, and then you're going to change your map resolution to 4096. By default, I think it's 1024. And what this does is a higher resolution will better detect smaller features in your HDRI map and give you more accurate sampling, but conversely, it will take more memory and render slightly slower. Higher values also produce less noise when using high res images, so it's worth the slow calculating time is you can use less samples, so it's definitely going to help us. So yes, it'll take longer to actually calculate each frame before it renders, but produce less noise with fewer samples, so it's going to ultimately increase our render time. So that's what you're going to do. And then there's one more thing you want to do. You're going to go into compositing. Actually, for compositing, one more thing you want to do. You want to go here, which is your view layer properties. And when you're here, you want to turn on denoising data. You're going to go to your compositing. I have a whole bunch of other render passes enabled. You're going to go to Shift A, and you're going to type in denoise. And from here, because we enabled that noise data over here, so we enabled denoising data here, it's going to give us these passes right here, noisy image, which you're going to put into image, denoising normal, we're going to put in normal, and denoising albedo, we're going to put into albedo. And when we set up our file outputs, I was using OpenEXR multi-layer, so I have all my passes in one, and you're going to select that, and you're going to put that into one of the slots. I made one called denoise. So I put my normal image in, and then I put my denoise. It's using an AI denoiser, and this will help tremendously. You're going to have to run a test to see how little samples you can get away with, but in my case, 100 is going to be fine after steam noise. It's going to take out tons of noise, so this is all we're going to need here. And another quick tip is for color depth, I always like to use 16-bit float instead of 32-bit float because the file is half the size and you're not going to notice any difference whatsoever. Now let's go into After Effects, and I'll show you one more tip to really help speed up your renders. Here in After Effects, I have a render right here. You can see I have my car. And I'll actually turn this plugin off and do from scratch for you. So this is a render doing the same technique with only 100 samples and there's a little bit of noise in the windshield. It's pretty small, but we can get rid of that using Neat Video. Neat Video is great. So Neat Video is a 2D denoiser, but it's going to do a huge difference to really help us use lower samples and cycles because this is unbelievably fast. So you can go to Prepare. I'm going to, let's see, we could use the noise in this window. It's pretty noisy here. You're going to find a big area of noise, drag out a rectangle on it. And then you're going to do Auto Profile, yes. And then we're going to go to Noise Filter Settings. And you can already see if I click it, that's before and that's after. I always like to go to General and put Performance to Slower because I like the best possible results. So as you can see, this is our before right here, all that noise. This is our after. So you can see it's huge. So I'll apply that. Look at all that. And if you look at this window too, I'll zoom in on it. Before, after. So that's going to save you tons and tons of time. So if you like this video, subscribe, like, and comment. If you don't like this video, give me two thumbs down, and I'll see you around.